All right, welcome back to Wireless Communications. I'm Sandeep Rungan at New York University. So in this third unit, we're going to cover a very fundamental topic in wireless communications, which is multipath fading. So if you took a wireless communications class maybe about 10 years ago, one of the classic texts in that subject was this book, Fundamentals of Wireless Communications by David Say and Pramod Vishnabhath. And at the introduction of their book, they say there are two fundamental aspects of wireless communications that makes the problem challenging and interesting. That is challenging and interesting relative to wired communications. And the first of these is fading. And the second is interference. And what we're going to talk about in today's unit is this issue of fading. And I'll address the interference when we talk about multi-user systems later. Okay, a lot of this um, unit will be basically review because once we recall how to model wireless channels through the front end of a transceiver, multipath fading is actually quite easy to describe. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start with a review that you probably covered in your digital communications class and they'll cover how to make sure you know how to simulate up and down conversion in time and frequency domain how to simulate the A to D and D to A conversion at the receiver and transmitter. Make sure we can do that both in uh, discrete time and continuous time. And also make sure that you're able to understand the effects of fractional delays and gains in that sample channel. Now, once we have that set up, we're going to look in particular what happens in a multipath wireless channel. And that's when we'll be able to see the effect of fading. In particular, we'll describe what we call a time varying frequency response, and is this time variations that cause these fluctuations in the channel that you see in real wireless systems, and you'll be able to simulate that and understand that. We'll also talk about how to do this statistically, and that's over an ensemble of channels, and that will lead us to something with very key quantities called the coherence time and the coherence bandwidth of the channel, which are very um, useful quantities when you're thinking about the receiver design. All right, with, those, uh, with that in mind, let's start the unit.